This video shows how to implement email and password authentication for an Android app. We use App Inventor 2 for realization and Google Sheets for user memorization. To add user, use this form. Now let's try to enter an email that already exists. The program does not add an existing email to the Google Sheet. To switch to the login interface, the user must click on this button. He uses his email and password to log into the Android application. If the user enters an email that does not exist in the database or an incorrect password then the program indicates his fault via a notification. If the data is correct then the user can access his profile. To begin with, create these three interfaces. The first interface allows the user to register. It contains a first vertical arrangement, where you place two labels to indicate the title of the interface. In a second vertical arrangement use three text boxes allowing the user to enter their name, email and phone number. For the password, use the password text box component which hides the text entered there. The third component vertical arrangement contains two buttons. The register button which controls the entry and registers the data in the Google Sheet. And this button which allows you to switch to the login interface. To finish add the two invisible components notifier and web. Now click on add screen to create login interface. To identify himself the user must provide his email and password. For that you find in this interface a component text box, and another a password text box. The login button is used to control user input and send the connection information to your authentication server which verifies the identification information. This button is used to quit the login interface and switch to the registration interface. Finally, for a forgotten password. The user clicks on this button to receive the password in his email address. This part is covered in the next video. To complete this interface add the two invisible components notifier and web. You can also place a vertical arrangement between components to create space and improve the appearance. Now create the third interface which contains two labels placed horizontally next to each other and a logout button. Use this drop-down list to return to screen 1. In the block part, program this button which allows you to switch to the login interface. Use the open another screen block which opens the screen with the name provided. In the same way program this button which is in the interface login so that it allows to go to the registration form. Now we want to control the input fields of the form before sending a request that requests the addition of a user. Use these blocks to verify that all input fields are not empty. If there is an empty field then a notification is displayed to inform the user. Otherwise the program goes to the next process. With these blocks we require that the email entered by the user contains an at. And we end this part by checking the password which must necessarily contain more than 5 characters. Now you just have to put all these blocks together.
Drag these blocks to your bag to use them in the login interface. In the login interface, there are only two input fields, email and password. So remove the other text areas and place the blocks in the click event of the login button. Now create a Google Apps Script web app link to a spreadsheet. First create your spreadsheet. Then click on Tools and select Script Editor. A new, empty script project opens. We first create the functions do get and do post. Do get usually works in a browser, do post works for AI too. They need the E in the parentheses to carry the parameters. The web app is activated when the URL to the Webot is called with parameters. Each action available in the web app is summoned with the func parameter. If the func parameter is create then add a new record. Here is the code. First, get a reference to the sheet. Next, declare and initialize an array called data, which contains the name, email, password and phone parameters. Finally, use append row to add a row to the spreadsheet. Now save and publish your web app. This project is now deployed as a web application and here is the URL of the web application. Now in screen 1 of AI to create a new URL using the join block and assign it to a variable. This new URL is composed by the URL of the web application. The ID parameter of the Google Sheet. This identifier is the value between slash d slash and slash edit in the URL of your spreadsheet. The name of the sheet which in our case is sheet 1. Drag these blocks into the bag to use it in the login interface. Now click on the web component and choose the URL property which specifies the URL. Use the URL we just created and add with the join block the func parameter with the value create. Also add the parameters, name, email, password and phone. Their values are obtained from the text boxes. Add to these blocks the get methods which executes an HTTP get request. Then place the hole in the click event of the register button. In the got text event which indicates that the request is complete, place a procedure which allows you to empty the input fields. and the show alert block which displays a temporary notification. Now modify the script so that it refuses to add any record whose email exists in Google Sheet. For this we use the query function which runs a query on all the data in a range and returns an array of data. First specify the sheet sh as the range. Then retrieve the email sent by the AI2 application. And use this query expression to retrieve the data. We select column B which contains the emails of the users and we ask to return only the lines which correspond to this condition. We will extract the result in a different sheet. For this create a new sheet. Then write the query function in cell A1. Finally, get the result of the query in the get result variable. Save and republish your script in a new version. Now test the AI2 application. You notice the creation of a new sheet in the Google spreadsheet. The formula is written in cell A1 of this sheet. If the email entered by the user exists in the range of values, then the query function returns the email found. Otherwise, it returns an error in cell A1. Use the affirr function to replace this error with an empty string. This function returns the first argument if it is not an error value, otherwise returns the second argument if it is present. Edit the query in the script. 
Then add a condition that allows adding a record only if cut result equals an empty string. Don't forget to delete the sheet you just created. Now let's move on to the login interface. In script editor add a second choice for the func parameter which is login. Here is the code related to this choice. Once you get a reference to the sheet, retrieve the email and password entered by the user. Then search for the email in the Google Sheet to retrieve the name, email and password of the user. You will find yourself in two cases. First case, the email is found. So move on to password verification. If it is correct then the application returns the name of the user. Otherwise it returns the string ERPWD. Second case, email not found so the web application returns the get result variable which contains an empty string. All that remains is to add the necessary blocks for the login interface in App Inventor. First go to the bag to extract the blocks from the URL. Then add the func, email and password parameter to this URL. And execute an HTTPGET request. Finally, use the gut text event to retrieve the response sent by the web application. If response content contains an empty string then display the couldn't find your account notification. Otherwise, compare response content to the string ERPWD. If they are equal then, the password entered by the user is incorrect and for that you must display the notification wrong password. Try again. Otherwise, open the Your Profile screen with the value response content, which contains the name of the user. We end this video by programming the Your Profile interface. When the screen starts put in label name the starting value given to the current screen. Then use the logout button to close the current screen.